What's going on, YouTube fam? Paul Masetta back here with you again with another communication analyzation breakdown video. Guys, real quick, again, my name is Paul Masetta, and I am a researcher in the world of human communication, specifically things like influence, persuasion, human psychology, really just how to communicate better with people. So if you're interested in learning about those kinds of things, then consider subscribing. So today's video, I'm gonna analyze a video from the great Myron Golden. So for those of you who might not know who Myron is, Myron is a, a very well-known thought leader, very good speaker, has spoken on many stages throughout the world. And specifically, what he does is he blends business advice and biblical context or biblical content with business advice. So what he does is he takes, I believe he's a pastor uh, of some sort. I could be wrong about that, but I know he does do a Bible study once a week on his, on his channel. But really what he does is he analyzes things from the Bible and then gives specific applications to business situations. So he'll take something from the Bible and then rather than just giving you like general life advice based on his interpretation of what he read, which is pretty much what everybody else does, what he does is he ties it to business advice. So he constantly pulls golden nuggets of business advice out of the Bible. So in this video, we're gonna analyze what he's doing in this video. I'm gonna share with you some, some very subtle things that he's doing that I believe are very powerful and very cool. So let's jump in and watch it together. Do you get stuck when somebody asks you, what do you do? Or what business are you in? And you start talking and nothing good comes out of it. Well, a lot of people would say, well, what you need to do is you need to have your elevator pitch down. So I think we should just Take the elevator pitch, put it in front of a firing squad, and all of us shoot at the same time. So two things that he did right out of the gate. The first thing was he opened up the speech with a question, which is a very effective way to get people's attention. Because when the human mind is confronted with a question, it cannot help but to try to find the answer to that question. So asking a thought provoking question when you open up any kind of a presentation is a very effective way to immediately get people's attention. But he asked a question that he knew a lot of people probably were going to answer yes to, right? So it's one thing to ask a question. It's another thing to ask a question that you know people are pretty much going to say yes to or they're going to agree with. Because what this does now is it aligns them with you and your message. It makes them even more receptive and open to what you're about to say because they feel like it's laser targeted and super relevant to them. Then, after that, he makes a statement saying that the elevator pitch in his mind or in his opinion should just be banished from eternity. So like in 17 seconds, he's asked a question, specifically a question that he knows most of the listeners are going to say yes to, and then he made a kind of controversial statement by stating that he believes that the elevator pitch should be pretty much banished from eternity and never used again. It's one of the worst popular ideas I've ever heard, an elevator pitch. I remember I was at Funnel Hacking Live 2016, San Diego, California. Marcus Limonis is the, like, the keynote speaker. Marcus Limonis from the TV show The Prophet. And for some reason or another, when I'm in big seminars and I'm just a dude in the audience, people like to pick on me. And so I'm, I'm like, when I'm listening... I'm compartmentalizing what people are saying and putting it in my little mind boxes on my little mind shelf. And, and so Marcus Lamona says, sir, so tell me, 
um, I meet you on an elevator pitch, and you're, I meet you on an elevator, and you're going to pitch me. What would you say? And I'm like, ah, blah, 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 blah. I'm pretty good at talking. And I said a whole bunch of incoherent nothingness, <laughs> served up a word salad big enough to feed 10 people. And it was, it was, it was, it was, it was terrible. It was, it was a fumble on the one yard line. I'm talking to Marcus Lemonis. He's the prophet. And I'm like, oh, blah, blah. and I'm like, literally for weeks, I was thinking, why did I have such a hard time answering that question? Give me your elevator pitch. And then I realized I don't have one. That's why I don't, I struggle with it because I don't have an elevator pitch. Because if I meet somebody on an elevator, the last thing I'm going to do is attempt to do some business with them. Like who are, like an elevator? An elevator is a terrible place to do business. Like who came up with this stupid idea? And then we all, so a couple of things that are happening here. So first is he tells a story, a very quick story, which brings the point that he's trying to make to life. Because rather than just making a statement, he tells this short but rather detailed story about how Marcus Lemonis from The Prophet singled him out and picked him out to ask a question about like what his elevator pitch was and then he was fumbling over his words and he, he didn't know how to answer the guy and he was like he felt embarrassed about it to the point that it was he thought about it for weeks on end and it was really bothering him and so what's what makes that story interesting is a couple of things number one is again rather than just making a statement he tells the story which makes it more vivid and memorable to the listener but the second thing is that he showcases vulnerability when he tells the story. So anybody that follows Myron knows that Myron is an extremely well-spoken guy. I mean, I think he even has courses where he teaches people how, like his version of public speaking. And public speakers that are well-known go to Myron to learn how to become better speakers. So he is absolutely positively an authority when it comes to public speaking and yet, what does he say? He says, when I was put in this situation, I was fumbling over my words. I didn't know what to say. And I felt embarrassed. And I think every one of us, when it comes to communication, every one of us has been in that situation at some point in our lives. I don't care how polished you are, how well-spoken you are, how quick you are, are on your feet, what your recall process is like when people challenge you or ask you questions. Everybody's been in a situation where they weren't they didn't think fast enough. They weren't fast enough on their feet. They were saying things that didn't make sense. And then they went back and analyzed it later and said, man, I feel kind of stupid for doing that. So it makes him relatable. But then he shoots into, again, why he believes the elevator pitch is in general a bad idea. Like he's, he's giving a pretty good case for it using the analogy. Like if I was in an elevator with somebody, why would I want to start using that as an opportunity to pitch them on a product or a service or an idea? What I, what I want you to pay close attention to is the tonality and the rhythm that he uses accompanied by his gestures. He's not just merely saying, I would never give a pitch on an elevator. That's a bad idea. Watch how much passion and enthusiasm he conveys as he's making these statements. We all go home and we manufacture this jive time elevator pitch that doesn't make any sense to us or anybody else. And we wonder why we're stuck. It's a bad idea. It's like somebody came up with the idea of goal setting, which I think is another terrible idea, but that's a different video for a different day. But everybody says it, so it must be true. No, it's not true. So I'm going to teach you how to create the answer to what do you do. But before I can teach you how to create the answer to what do you do, I'm going to help you understand what people mean when they say what do you do. Because what they're not saying is please feed me a word salad. They're not saying, could you please go into a drunkalogue with a bunch of words that don't make any sense? so I can feel like you talk to me? That's not what they mean either. Um, what they mean is, here's what the question really means. What do you do for people and what can you do for me? So now what he's done is he's reframed the way most people think about that question. Most people think, what do you do? 
when they hear that question, they try to quickly compartmentalize all of the different things that they do into like a sentence. But what he's done is reframed the way they actually think about that question. And in that process of reframing the way the person thinks about that question, the answer now to that question is going to become much easier. So really he accomplishes two goals by doing this. Number one, he gets you to start thinking what he wants you to start thinking. By reframing the way that you think about that question, you're now going to accept his idea. His idea throughout this whole thing is, well, it's two part really. It's that the elevator pitch is stupid, but really the idea is when people ask you that question, they're really asking you this question and therefore this is the way you should be answering that question. And he's right about that, but he's accomplishing two things. Number one, by reframing the way you think about that question, he's now aligning your thoughts with his idea. So now you're going to be way more open to all the ideas and the suggestions that he makes moving forward. But the second thing is, is that he's actually is giving you clarity and what he's saying works. So when you walk away from this, you are going to be able to answer that question more effectively, more efficiently, and more confidently. That's what the question actually means. So if you just start there, even if I don't say anything else in this video, if, if you just start with, this is what I do for people, and this is what I can do, can do for you. If that's where you start, you will have a better answer than any elevator pitch anybody ever came up with, and certainly better than a word salad buffet. So now, the last thing that I'm going to showcase is the way Myron answers the question, what do you do when people ask him that question? Because his answer to this question is a masterclass in confidence, clarity, and conviction. And those are the three superpowers that you want to have when it comes to communication. Clarity, confidence, and conviction. I want you to watch the way he answers this question. There are no vocal fillers. There is no stopping to think about what he's going to say. There is not an inkling of anxiety or lack of confidence in anything that he says. And there is nothing that he says that makes you say, what did he say? Can you say that again? That wasn't clear. It didn't make sense to me. So pay attention to that. So when people ask me what I do, I'm going to tell them what I do for people and what I can do for them so that I can qualify the qualified and disqualify the unqualified. Now you have to understand that it can't be just one of those. It has to be both. Why? Because anything that is for everybody is also for nobody. I help everybody. No, you don't. You're just delusional and nobody is willing to tell you. You don't help everybody. No, what I have is good for everybody. No, it's not. It's not good for everybody. Even if it would be good for everybody, it's still not good for everybody. So a part of the objective of your answer is to qualify the qualified and disqualify the unqualified. So how do you do that? The first thing you have to do is you have to identify your ideal avatar in your statement. Okay? What does that mean? I help and then you can fill in the blank with whoever you help. For me, it's I help authors, speakers, coaches, agency owners, and other high-level entrepreneurs create, convey, and convert premium value offers faster and better than any coach in the world. In fact, while other coaches are doing their best to help their clients have six and seven figure years, I'm actually helping my clients have six and seven figure days. Amazing. I mean, that is, that is, that is a masterclass in terms of like answering a question with clarity, confidence, and conviction. His body language, his tonality, the verbiage, the words that he's using, all really, really, really top class stuff from Myron Golden. So look, 
If you want to see more videos from Myron, obviously go check out his, his YouTube channel because he's got tons of them on there. But really, the takeaway for you or the takeaways for you from this short little analyzation video should be number one, open with a thought-provoking question if you want to get people's attention. Preferably, it should be a question that you think people will say yes to or will agree with. Then make, declare something like put your, plant your flag in the ground and make a statement that you believe to be absolutely positively true. If that statement is, is kind of something that goes against conventional thinking or conventional wisdom, it's even better because it makes people really curious to understand why you have this outlook or this, or, or this perception of this particular topic like for him for example he said that he thinks the elevator pitch is the stupidest thing that was ever created so that gets people curious because they want to know well why does he think that right so you make a really thought-provoking kind of controversial statement and then you reframe the way people think about the problem that they're having so that they will then be more open to the ideas that you're going to convey after that so look guys if you enjoyed this video once again leave me a comment down below let me know what you thought let me know if you agree disagree with anything i said let me know what you think about myron golden and again if you enjoy this type of content go ahead consider subscribing give me a like if you actually like the video and make sure you hit that bell notification so you get updated when i release more videos like these